everybody welcome it's jade welcome back to my youtube channel today we are doing week 49 yes we are in the first week of december we have three more weeks to go before we hit week 52 are you excited i'm excited i'm so proud of you i'm so proud of myself i am so excited we are in december we have been doing this for almost a year it is so crazy and i want to thank you for coming along with me on this journey so our scripture for today is second corinthians 9 verses 6. all right we're going to get a little bit into the scripture shortly but before we do that we want to set out all our elements that we're going to be using so i have the element from the scripture 52 extras for december all set out so I can choose whatever I want. Sometimes I try to choose the images or the ephemera beforehand. Sometimes I don't, like today. And so I have everything spread out so I can just decide what I feel like. I have my scripture. I'm going to cut that down. I'm also going to cut out the 29. I'm going to 49 and stick that down onto my page and just get myself ready to start the creation. So now that we have done all of that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab some green and some yellow paint. I know, the green doesn't match, <laughs> but we're going to try and darken it up a little later down in the video. I'm just going to make a border all around the card. I'm going to do that with the gold slash yellow, and then I'm going to come on in with the green and just add three little streaks around the same yellow border and then I'm going to darken that up with the darker version of the green. So while we do that, let's just go ahead and read our scripture. I'm going to read it in three different translations and it reads, the point is, this is from the ESV, the point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Or I'm going to now read from the Passion Translation. And it says, here's my point. A stinging, a stinging sower will reap a meager harvest. I'm so sorry. A stingy sower will reap a, a meager I'm sorry, I'm butchering this. <laughs> All right, let's go again. Here's my point. A stingy sower will reap a marker harvest, but the one who sows from a generous spirit will reap an abundant harvest. All right, and I'm also going to read from the Amplified Version, which says, And now remember this. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows generously that blessings may come to others will also reap generously and be blessed. Amen? Amen. All right. So what I'm getting from this, which is pretty explanatory here, but sometimes we don't <laughs> live this out. Why? Have you ever, and this is a little confession, as they say, confession is good for the soul. Sometimes I get, or I feel some type of way when I have to share certain things. And hear, hear me out here. And this is not an excuse. I live in sort of a big household, right? My mom, my two sisters, I have a son. One of my sister has two ch children. Two girls and my other sister has one boy. Okay? And you can't eat in peace. You know, you can't if you put something to your mouth, someone is gonna be like, I don't want some, right? And my son had a 
my son had there was some parent activity at school and we were to bring um, lunch for us and our child we did that and then we did some art afterwards and my son wanted KFC but I the line was too long for me to get to him in time so I just bought Chinese so I had two options what do you want KFC or Chinese we got Chinese this KFC was too long and he ate I didn't eat mind you I was on a selective fast that day I mean I did not anticipate on fasting but oh yeah I remember I ate some greens and ever since I got pregnant it just doesn't work with my body my body rejects it and so I've been eating a lot of it and I can't keep anything in okay so I was on a selective fast just because I couldn't keep anything down so I um, I came home with the food I didn't want to eat it on the road in case I had an accident. So I brought the food home, of course, my son once more. And I, like I said, I have not eaten all day. This is now 3 o'clock. And so I got him and I was like, oh, I want some of that. And my first instinct was like, no, I'm hungry. No. Okay, first, first things first, my son comes first. Okay? I have to make sure he's eaten and he has his seconds, right? Uh, and then, like I said, I haven't eaten either and I don't have the energy because now I'm drained to go and make something to eat. So I told her, and she's like, no, but I still want some, right? And then, long and short is, I didn't give it to her. <laughs> You're like, oh, geez, that's so mean. And there are two sides whatever story right now looking back I could have shared but when you're in a large household sometimes you feel like you have nothing for yourself you have no privacy you know you don't have your own space even though you do but you don't because you really don't and I was coming this is where I was coming from I don't eat out a lot my, which means my son doesn't eat out a lot. My sister, they do, but I don't because my son has autism and I try to watch what he eats. I try to make a healthy, make healthy choices for him in terms of food and so on and so forth because of the blood brain barrier and all of that, which we got here, all of that stuff. So I try to make sure we're eating healthy and I have already told him yeah we are cutting certain things out we're eating healthy okay and so this was is it's like a treat we don't always get Chinese we don't always get fast food so it's a treat for him and I wanted him to feel special because it was his day and I just felt some type of way about that because he's a child and you want to take from him you know, you're not really caring that I didn't eat. And so I was thinking about that. But as I read the scripture that came back to my mind, and you might just be a little food. But what is it saying? He that sows sparingly shall reap a meager, a mager harvest, reap sparingly. And it might not be sowing physically into the ground. But it's sowing into a relationship. It could be sowing into a friendship. It could be sowing into any aspect of your life. Whatever you put in, you get out. Whatever you put in, you get out. And I remember my mom saying, Oh, if you ask him, he will say yes. Sure, he will say yes, just because sometimes he people please it. However, when I looked more at this little situation, I realized something very interesting. My mother favors my niece. She, she denies it, but she does. So whatever goes to my mother's mouth also goes to my niece's mouth, meaning 
if my mom is eating a bun, she breaks it in half and she gives it to my niece. My son doesn't get any. You see what I'm saying? So whatever my niece is eating, she then turns around and if she's eating something, she's like, Grandma, do you want some? My son is not like that. <laughs> right? He's and I share with him a lot and sometimes he doesn't even want to share with me. You know what I mean? And he's like she's like, Oh, he's my grandson, he will. But if you're not suing into a relationship and yes, he's your grandchild, but you don't have that bond where you have that bond with your granddaughter, you don't have the same bond with him. And so he is more likely not to want to share. And in situations like that, some persons would say, oh, you should force him. I won't. Um, just because I don't want him growing up people pleasing. Yes, I teach him. I try to teach him how to be kind. I try to teach him how to share and all of that. But at the same time, children are very perceptive. And whatever you put out, that's what they're going to get. Hopefully, you're getting what I'm trying to say from all of this. If you so into a relationship, you will reap what you had sown. And so it is with this scripture in our entire life, no matter what area of our life, wherever we sow, that's what we are going to reap. And so if we sow into our friendships, if we sow good into our friendships, we're gonna reap good. If we sow bad, we're gonna reap bad. If we sow physical food, we will reap a harvest. Providing that we water, there's sufficient sunlight, there's sufficient nutrient in the soil and all of that. So there are different conditions in which when we sow, we reap. Okay, and I'm not really narrating based on what I'm doing because it's pretty explanatory what I'm doing here. It's nothing fancy. I'm just putting down some washi and the elements that came with the set. And then I'm going to write my thought. But... Sometimes when we think of a flower being planted, we just say, oh, you dig a hole into the ground, you put the seed in, and you water it. Okay, that's not the only thing that it needs. Because you must now sit down and think, is this the correct season to be planted a pumpkin? Right? Especially if you live in an area where there's snow. Is this the correct season to plant, what else is seasonal? An apple. Okay, those are seasonal. Is it the correct season to plant grapes? Is it the correct season to plant a strawberry? Is it the correct season to plant a winter squash? Are you going to plant that in spring? No, you're not. So you must know the conditions. You must know the environment. You must know the variables in the soil, nutrient density in the soil, and all of these things, they play a vital part. So why am I saying this? When we are sowing, we must first assess the environment, we must assess the soil, and we must assess our motives. Why are we sowing? What do we intend to get? Are we looking back for something in return? Are we doing something just so that we can be seen and we can gain attention? Make sure you have the best motives, the right motives i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did give it a thumbs up and comment down below i'll see you in the next one